Hi everyone, this is lecture 15 in analog circuits. In this lecture, we will discuss about the negative clampers. That is how to analyze the negative clamper circuit and how to draw the output waveform of a negative clamper circuit. In that, we are going to discuss about the two types that is unbiased negative clamper and biased negative clamper. Before that, we will discuss what we have seen in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I have given some introduction to clampers that is what is a clamper, applications of a clamper, then we have seen what are the components we will use in clamping circuits, then we have seen types of clampers, then we have seen the working of a capacitor. Now what is a clamper? Clamper is a circuit that shifts the DC level of a given input signal without changing its peak to peak value. That is we have seen something like this. So this is the input signal which is having peak to peak as 10 volts and the DC level is 0 volt. So we can get the output waveforms as like this when we pass this signal to the to a clamping circuits. So this is negative clamping, this is a positive clamping and so on. Right? So it is shifting the DC level of a given input signal. Right? And we have seen some different different names that is DC restorer, clamping circuit is also called DC restorer or level shifter or we can say clamped capacitor because it is clamping the input signal to a predetermined value or predefined value right then we have seen applications of a clamper that is it can be used as a voltage doubler or we can say voltage multiplier then we have seen it can be used as a level shifter in operational amplifier circuits or general amplifier circuits also multi-stage amplifiers and in communication systems also we will use this clamping circuit to restore the DC value right so these are the some uh, applications then we have seen what are the components used in clamping circuits so only three components we will use that is a resistor capacitor and a diode right then we have seen the what are the different types of clampers that is positive clamper negative clamper in positive clamper we will have unbiased positive clamper biased positive clamper then unbiased negative clamper and biased negative clamper then finally we have seen how the capacitor will work how it is blocking the dc voltage how it is allowing ac voltage right now we need one more concept that is if we connect a circuit something like this a resistor and a capacitor and a dc voltage so how much fast the capacitor will charge to this capital V volts that we need to find so we need some derivation so that I will do first then we will discuss about the negative clampers so I can use the Laplace transform to find the VC of T so this is a DC voltage if I convert into Laplace domain so in Laplace domain the capacitor will be replaced by 1 by Cs and this DC voltage is constant so this will be replaced by v by s right so it is like a unit step voltage if it is simply one volt so it will become one by s two volts two by s and so on so this will become plus minus v by s this is r this is one by c s and this is will become vc of s right now what i need i need the capacitor voltage so i can apply simply voltage division rule so vc of s is equal to this is the impedance so 1 by cs into the main voltage or source voltage that is v by s by total impedance that is r plus 1 by cs so this will come out as vc of s is equal to v by c into s square by r cs plus 1 by cs so i can cancel c and C 1s and 1s so this will be V by S into 1 plus RCS so this is the VC of S so to uh, find the inverse Laplace transform what I will do is so I will uh, take this S and RC common so this will become 1 plus sorry S plus 1 by RC right so this will be V by RC because it is a constant S into S plus 1 by RC. So then we have to do the partial fraction. So A by S plus 
b by s plus 1 by rc so to find the a we have to substitute s is equal to 0 so if i substitute s is equal to 0 i will get a is equal to v if i substitute s is equal to minus 1 by rc i will get b is equal to so minus 1 by rc i will get minus v right this is a 2 so then it will be vc of s is equal to v by s minus v by s plus 1 by rc so if i take v common this will become 1 by s minus 1 by s plus 1 by rc so this is the vc of s now if i take the inverse plus transform so vc of t will be v into this is the unit step function so that will become 1 simply this is 1 by s plus a so this will become e power minus a t what is a 1 by r c into t so this will become e power minus t by r c so this is the capacitor voltage for this circuit whenever there is a resistance and capacitance and when we apply dc voltage so how the capacitor will charge that depends on the this equation that is vc of t is equal to v into 1 minus e for minus t by rc now what is this rc is called so this rc is called a time constant tau so this is time constant tau so vc of t i can replace 1 minus e power minus t by tau right now suppose tau is equal to rc now if i make this r is equal to 0 suppose there is no resistance at all so tau is equal to 0 that means what is, what is this value vc of t v into 1 minus e power minus t by 0 so 1 by 0 infinity so e power minus infinity will be 0 so this will be vc of t will be v that is the capacitor charges very quick to this v volts that is a we can say final value right if suppose if the time constant is very much greater than 1 then the capacitor then the capacitor charges very slow right so if i draw the this uh, waveform vc of t is equal to v into 1 minus e power minus t by tau right so this is the v is the final value i can say this is the t this is the vc of t suppose at t is equal to infinity so this will become zero so it will be reached to this v volt as time is progressing it will reach it to v volt so we will get the waveform something like this so at t is equal to infinity then only it will reach to actually v but practically at t is equal to phi tau it will reach to 99 percent of the final value that is also we will see first we will see at t is equal to tau at t is equal to tau vc of tau will be v into 1 minus e power minus tau by tau so that will become minus 1 so this will be 0 0.637 into v that is 63 7 63.7 percent of final value so at t is equal to tau the capacitor will charge it to 63 percent or we can say 0 0.637 into v at t is equal to phi tau right so if i substitute at t equal to phi tau so it will become 1 minus e power minus 5 tau by tau so it will be 1 minus e power minus 5 so this will be come out as 0 0.99 uh, into v so 99 percent of the final value right so maybe somewhere here like this so 99 percent so practically we will consider as at t is equal to phi tau that is five times of time constant the capacitor will charge it to its final value but ideally at t is equal to infinity it will reach it to final value right so here we need to remember is when r is equal to 0 that is when there, there is no resistance at all the capacitor will quickly charge it charge to its final value so vc of t will be directly v that is capacitor charge charges very quick within no time it will be reached to its final value when as r is increasing r is c is increasing final r we can say as the time constant is increasing capacitor capacitor charges slowly right it is taking so much time to reach its final value that is something like this we will get suppose the time constant is very high then 
the waveform will be something like this right if the time constant is very small so we may get something like this or something like this that is when uh, r is equal to 0 that is time time constant tau will be 0 that is within no time at t is equal to 0 only the capacitor will charge to its final value as time constant is increasing so it will take some time to reach to its final value so this is about the capacitor behavior when we connect the capacitor in a circuit something like this right so when we apply dc voltage how much time the capacitor will take to charge to this value that depends on the time constant tau which is equal to tau is equal to rc now consider scenario something like this suppose the capacitor is charged to this v volts and if we make this v is equal to 0 that is something like this so when we make v is equal to 0 means we have to make the short circuit so this will be r and this is the capacitor c and it is having already charged to some v volts right now if i find this capacitor voltage that is vc of t so what we will get always remember when the capacitor is charged to some voltage and uh, there is no source at all that is when we make this voltage as zero now the capacitor will behave as a source for what to this resistor r so for this resistor r the capacitor will behave as a source and it will deliver the power to this resistor and the resistor will dissipate that power right so how much time the capacitor will take to discharge to zero from v so that we need to find so for that I need to use again the Laplace domain approach. So first we will uh, draw the simplified uh, circuit this is R and capacity is already having some voltage V. So I can replace something like this plus minus V and this is the capacitor C. Right? Now if I convert into Laplace domain so this will be R only. So plus minus V means it will become as V by S then capacitor will be replaced by 1 by cs so this is the vc of s because it is having already a uh, stored value that is v then a capacitor 1 by cs right now if i apply the nodal analysis this is the vc of s so this is the reference ground so vc of s minus 0 by r plus vc of s minus v by s this is the source by 1 by cs is equal to 0 so if i take vc of s common the 1 by r plus cs is equal to so v by s by 1 by cs so s is cancelled so this will become c into v so vc of s will be 1 plus r cs by r is equal to c into v so vc of s will be rc into v by 1 plus r cs if i take rc common this will become s plus 1 by rc so rc rc cancel so this is v by s plus 1 by rc now if i take the inverse laplace transform so vc of t will be v into 1 by s plus a so e power minus a t so t by rc so this is the capacitance voltage when now there is no source so now capacitor is acting as a source now when i draw the waveform of this uh, signal that is vc of t is equal to v is the initial voltage e power minus t by rc so this will be exponential decay function so at t is equal to 0 v as t is increasing so it will be reduced to 0 at t is equal to infinity it will be reduced to 0 this is the t right so again this rc is called tau is equal to rc right now you can tell now when suppose r is equal to 0 that is time constant is equal to 0 so 1 by 0 infinity so it will be quickly discharged to 0 right as the time constant is increasing it will be slowly discharges right so this is the capacitance voltage whenever there is no source when the capacitor is acting like a source or when the capacitor is discharging it follows this curve or this equation so again practically at t is equal to phi tau vc of t is approximately will get as 0 similarly at t is equal to tau one time constant so vc of t or vc of tau will become as v into e power minus 1 so that will be 0 0.367 times of v that is i can say 36 per 36 point 
seven percent of fee. So it will be reduced to thirty six percent, approximately thirty six point seven percent of the initial value. Right? How much we lost? The approximately sixty three percent we lost. Right? So that is the capacitor behavior when it is discharging. Right? So final conclusion is: suppose capacitor is charged to some five volts. Suppose there is no closed path, right? So there is no discharge path. So it should retain this five volts up to infinity time. But practically, after some time, it will be discharged to zero, right? That you can verify in your labs. So charge this capacitor uh, to five volts. See after one hour, right? Is there any voltage or not? See after ten minutes, twenty minutes, and so on. Right. If there is a very uh, high capacitance value, it may store up to one hour, two hours, maybe twenty-four hour also. Right. That you can verify in your labs. So this is about this uh, capacitor behavior when it is charging and when it is discharging. Now we will discuss about the this negative clampers because when you know the behavior of the capacitor, then we can easily analyze the clamping circuits. Right. I hope it is clear. now we will discuss the first clamping circuit that is called unbiased negative clamper or simply we can say negative clamper so this is the circuit diagram of negative clamper and remember the capacitor should be in series with this source and this is the ac source so it may be square wave form it may be triangular wave form it may be sinusoidal wave form right and the diode should be in parallel with the source and when we take the output across the diode then we will get the clamping circuit when we take output across the capacitor we will get another circuit that is called peak detector that we will see after completion of the clamping circuits right so i will analyze this circuit using the uh, square wave form using sinusoidal wave form then you can apply for triangular wave form also why i am starting with the square wave form is the analysis will be very simple actually right why why because from t is equal to 0 to t by 2 we are applying the constant voltage that is plus vm similarly from capital t by 2 to t we are applying a constant voltage as minus vm but whereas in sinusoidal signal the amplitude is keep on varying right that's why the analysis will be somewhat complex right now how to analyze this circuit is whenever there is a diode always we will use one approach that is called as open circuit method because i need to draw the output waveform so when i want to draw the output waveform for a given diode circuit always we will use the open circuit method so what is the open circuit method we have to open the diode and we have to find the anode voltage and cathode voltage if anode voltage is greater than the cathode voltage the diode will be on when anode voltage is less than cathode voltage the diode will be off right so the that approach we will use now to analyze this circuit now again we will have two conditions if the diode is diode is ideal so we will get one output waveform when the diode is practical another waveform right so first is when the diode is ideal now when we open this diode what is the equivalent circuit so this will be equivalent circuit this is plus minus v in so this is the va this is the vk vk anyway zero so in the previous lecture we have seen whenever there is a capacitor and when i apply ac signal what is the voltage here will appear the same voltage will appear that we have seen in the previous lecture right if there is a dc source then that will be stored in this capacitor va will be simply zero so when i open this diode va will be v in and anyway vk will be zero now in v in we will have positive half cycle and negative half cycle right now the first condition when we apply v in is positive half cycle that is when v in is greater than zero so when v in is greater than zero that means va is also greater than zero right so that means we will get the condition as something like this so VA is greater than VK. Why VK is zero and VA is equal to V in and V in is greater than zero. So we'll get VA is greater than zero. That means what? The diode D will be on, or we can say will be 
in forward bias. So whenever the diode is in forward bias and if it is ideal, it will be replaced by simply a short circuit. Right? Now the circuit will become like this. So this is I am applying plus minus maximum how much I am applying Vm positive Vm and this is the capacitor C. So we need to find how much charge or how much voltage the capacitor will store that is I am I mean denoting by Vc and replacing the diode by a short circuit. So this is the output voltage. Now tell me the moment the diode is uh, forward bias it will be replaced by short circuit then what will be the output simply 0 volt right now if you see the circuit there is a capacitor there is a DC voltage so what can be the VC very simple whatever the we are applying the DC voltage or whatever up voltage we are applying that will be stored in the capacitor if a confusion very simple apply simply KVL minus VM plus VC is equal to 0 so what is VC simply Vm. So whatever we apply that is stored on the capacitor. Now how much time it will take to charge up to Vm? What is the time constant in the circuit? R into C. Is there any R? No. Simply 0. So with uh, within no time the capacitor will be charged to Vm. Right? So this is the first condition. Now when I apply this Vn less than 0 negative so that means VA will be less than 0 so that means what the diode D will be in reverse bias or we can say off when it is off it will be replaced by a open circuit so the circuit will be so this is the capacitor but the capacitor stored the VM and I am applying a negative half cycle remember so that is minus plus see polarities will be changed as minus plus this is Vm and the diode is open circuited so here I am finding the V out now I want V out so simply apply KVL through this loop right so what is the plus Vm plus Vm see here plus Vm plus Vm this is plus V out is equal to 0 so what is the V out it is minus 2 Vm right so when I apply a positive half cycle there is a maximum as plus Vm I am getting V out as 0 and when we apply the negative half cycle I am getting V out as minus 2 Vm now we can draw the output waveform something like this so first I will draw the input waveform something like this for one time period 0 t by 2 t this is the v in vm minus vm so when I want to draw the output waveform v out 0 see when I apply positive half cycle what is v out 0 so that means for this positive half cycle output voltage will be 0 and for the negative half cycle what is the output voltage we are getting minus 2 Vm so minus 2 Vm that means this is the minus 2 Vm something like this right and if I apply one more positive half cycle and a negative half cycle and so on say again positive half cycle so off then negative half cycle means minus 2 Vm and so on right so this is from 0 to T by 2 T now if I find the average value of the output signal so what value we will get is minus Vm right that we can easily verify so V out average will be 1 by t integration of from 0 to t by 2 it is 0 so we have to integrate from t by 2 to t what is the value minus 2 vm dt right so this will be minus 2 vm by t into t minus t by 2 so this will be t by 2 so t, t will be cancelled 2 2 will be cancelled 
so what is the dc value or average value of the signal is minus vm so v out average or v out dc is minus vm right now we can draw the output waveform in another way that is also i will explain so that is also very simple actually see here for a positive half cycle vn when it is a positive so v out was simply zero right so when v in is negative so take the circuit something like this this is the v in and v in we are applying negative and we know capacitor is already stored vm which is vc and now the diode is off so that means this is the v out and now if i apply kvl across this loop so what i will get minus v in plus vm plus v out is equal to zero so what is v out now it is minus vm plus v in so this is the output uh, signal right so what is this this is the v in which is a ac signal so this is the peak value which is minus so minus vm is the peak value so which is we can say this is the dc value right which is not varying but this v in is varying signal now see we can easily draw the output waveform this is the t this is the 0 t by 2 t vm minus vm this is v in now see this equation so v in is equal to suppose vm so when v in is equal to vm what is v out from that equation minus vm plus vm zero when v in is equal to zero what is v out v in is zero means simply minus vm when v in is equal to minus vm what is v out minus vm minus vm so minus 2 vm see so we'll get the same output waveform as like this right so this is one way of finding or drawing the output waveform so find the output equation then substitute v in values 0 vm minus vm and so on right you can remember any one of the approach to draw the output waveform right so this is for ideal case now if the diode is practical so there is a slight change in the output waveform we will get so this is the v in capacitor diode v out so the second condition when the diode is practical that is when we use this constant voltage drop model constant voltage drop model very simple actually so we have already seen in the clipping circuit whenever the diode is on whenever the diode is on it will be replaced by a a voltage source as 0.7 volt off means same as the open circuit so so when v in is positive so that means the diode is on when the diode is on it will be replaced by a 0.7 volt so for a positive half cycle so how much we are applying positive half cycle that is maximum we are applying vm and this is the capacitor so capacitance voltage i need to find and here the diode will be replaced by a point 7 voltage drop now tell me what is v out so v out in the previous case was 0 now it is not 0 it is 0 0.7 volt right and what is the vc value we need to see so apply kvl minus vm plus vc plus 0 0.7 is equal to 0 now what is vc vm minus 0 0.7 right previously it was vm now it is less than 0 0.7 right so if it is a vm is 5 volt then vc will be only 4.3 volts only so that is a difference you will get so this is for on condition so when the diode is off so what will be that condition so when v in is negative half cycle so this is i'm applying minus of plus or we can simply as v in i can apply and this is the capacitor which is having already some capacitance voltage as vc and diode d will be off in the negative half cycle same so now what is v out again apply kvl minus v in plus vc plus v out is equal to zero now what is v out v in minus vc right 
but what is vc vm minus 0.7 so v in minus v in minus 0.7 so this will come out as 0.7 minus minus point i mean plus minus okay so this is vm this is vm so minus vm plus v in. so we are getting the extra points on volt here that is the only difference now we can easily draw the output waveform so simple when v in is equal to vm so what is v out this two will be cancelled this will be 0.7 when v in is equal to 0 so this will be v out is 0.7 minus vm next case when v in is equal to minus vm v out will be 0.7 minus 2 vm that's it now we can draw the output waveform easily so this is t minus vm plus vm v in this is t v out now see so when v in is equal to vm we should get points on volt so here i will get 0 0.7 volt then when v in is equal to 0 we will get 0 0.7 minus vm so previously it was minus vm now it is minus vm plus 0 0.7 right and the maximum how much it can go 0 0.7 minus 2 vm so something like this we will get and so on right so what is this this value minus 2 vm plus 0 0.7 right suppose if vm is equal to suppose 5 volt so what is the waveform we will get is 0 0.7 to so minus 5 plus 0 0.7 so the dc value will be minus 4.3 and maximum it will be so minus 2 means minus 10 volts plus 0 0.7 so minus 9.3 volts and so on so this is the output waveform when input peak is 5 volt now what is the clamping name see we are adding a negative dc right so the input signal is clamped to negative side so that's why it is called negative clamper and we need to make some observations that is so if i take the same circuit capacitor c v in this is the diode right so this is the we need to take the output waveform now the first observation is the how much amount of voltage is storing on the capacitor that is plus minus vc that much amount of shift is there right so when vc is equal to vm right so this much amount of shift is there towards negative side yes or no so see here when we uh, when you see the output waveform that is v out so we got something like this right so what was the dc value minus vm maximum minus 2m if it is a ideal case now see how much shift is there minus vm towards negative side so that is the first observation so the shift in dc level is equivalent equivalent to capacitor voltage so how much the capacitor stores that is plus minus vc so in this case minus vm I mean actually vm that is a magnitude but it is a negative clamper so we will get the negative dc value the second observation is what is the rms value for this signal or we can say vrms will not be changed so vrms will remain same will remain same that we can verify so what is the rms value so root mean square value square root of 1 by time period 0 to t v square t dt so use this formula and find the rms value for this waveform and the input signal waveform both will be same and one more thing one more observation is the output peak to peak output peak to peak will remain same 
will remain same so what is the peak to peak value this is 2 vm and what is the input signal peak to peak it is also 2 vm because minus vm to plus vm right and uh, the final uh, conclusion i can uh, make is see see the polarities of the diode see the arrow is downward so the input signal will be clamped to downside that is it will do the negative clamping that is only for to remember which type of clamping it will do suppose any circuit is given right it is it a positive clamper or negative clamper so we can easily tell if the arrow is downside we can say it is a negative clamping if the arrow is uh, top we can say it is a positive clamper right so this is about the negative clamper using the square waveform now we will see using the sinusoidal waveform right so the same circuit i will take so analysis will be somewhat different this is the capacitor c sinusoidal signal v in this is a diode d so here i want to find the output voltage or need to draw the output waveform so here i am applying a sinusoidal signal t by 2 t vm minus vm this is vn now how to analyze this circuit now see again we are having a positive half cycle and negative half cycle but see here up to this time the input signal is reached to maximum peak value then it is decreasing so the diode will be on up to this time then the remaining time it will be off so that we need to consider now now first we will see i will go for first ideal case then we can easily draw for practical condition right so if the diode d is ideal so the same condition so va will be v in so initially uh, the capacitor is uncharged so when v in is positive right the diode d is on that is followed by us replaced by a short circuit so this is the capacitor the capacitor voltage we need to find so this is the short circuit so if i apply maximum peak as vm so this is the v out now tell me what is v out zero volt right and what is the capacitance value so minus vm plus vc is equal to zero so what is vc vm now what will happen when the input is reducing from vm right suppose the input signal is suppose here okay i will take uh, this is 5 volt and this is the 4 volt right now if you see the circuit the capacity is all already charged to that vm so here i am assuming 5 volt and now i am applying a plus minus 4 c plus minus 4 and this is the diode now if you apply kvl see here minus 4 plus 5 and this is the vd right across the diode voltage so which is equal to 0 so what is vd here minus 4 plus 5 means plus 1 if it is going that side minus 1 volt so whenever this is a minus 1 volt the diode will be off so after this point when the input signal is try to decrease the diode will be off right for the entire from here to here the diode will be in half mode generally in any test book they will not tell you why the diode is off right see we have to analyze see we can analyze in another way see suppose if vn is equal to suppose minus 2 volts right and uh, vc is equal to this is plus 5 volt because i am taking as 5 volt now if you see the capacitor voltage is already 5 volts and what i am applying minus 2 volts that is minus plus 2 volts and this is the sum va this is vk so this is i am uh, opening the diode now this is 2 volts so plus 2 plus 5 right? plus va is equal to 0 then what is va va is minus 7 volt and what is vk it is connected to ground so vk is 0 now now tell me which one is higher the cathode voltage is higher than the anode voltage that means what happens to diode diode is off 
right so that's why from here to here the diode will be in off mode so whatever the capacitor stores the voltage that will be there up to infinite time because when the diode is off so there is no closed path so there is no discharge path to discharge this capacitor so that capacitor voltage will be there up to infinite time right so that voltage plus whatever we apply now input voltage see if we keep on applying whatever so the diode is still off so it will never come to on state because once it is on it will be charged to plus vm when it is charged to vm now when we decrease this input signal or increase it to again back to vm it will never be on again that we can verify also see up to here it is off now i am giving input signal as plus 5 suppose next peak so now if i apply v is equal to 5 volt and the capacitor voltage is also already 5 volt this is plus minus 5 and this is the va this is the vk now apply kvl minus 5 plus 5 plus va is equal to 0 both are cancelled what is va 0 what is vk 0 so i should get va at least greater than 0 but i am not getting right so that means the diode is still off right if it is a practical very good so va should be at least greater than vk by 0.7 volt so the diode will be in off mode right so indefinitely the diode will be off and indefinitely the capacitor stores that voltage as vm right draw the output waveform we have to consider from here to here right so from here to there so i am applying as same plus minus v in only from this point to this point and the capacitor stores already vm and the diode is off right because i am applying the these portions and apply kvl minus v in plus vm plus v out is equal to zero so what is v out minus vm plus v in so this is the equation we will get now we can easily draw the output waveform directly don't put v in as zero minus vm because up to vm see the diode is on then it will be off and so on so we will get different waveform compared to the previous case that is square waveform so now see up to vm this is vm minus vm up to vm the diode is off when it is off what we will get zero right and when it is decreasing so the diode is off so when a diode is off what is the output waveform minus vm plus vn so when i substitute vn is equal to vm what is output zero right next when it is decreasing suppose when vn is equal to zero so what is the output minus vm so this is the minus vm and uh, when vn is equal to minus vm at this point what i will get minus 2 vm so minus 2 vm so carefully we have to draw so from here i will get something like this the waveform and so on so see the waveform will start from here that is at v in is equal to vm the output is zero and when v in is equal to zero the output will be minus vm see and when this one minus 2 vm again when it is going back see when again it is zero we will get minus vm and it will continue because the diode is off it will never be on again so it will be continue as like this so again it will get zero and so on right so that's why we will get a slight different waveform compared to the square waveform now we can easily analyze when the diode is practical right so same circuit again so no need to do the analysis again this is plus minus v in plus minus v out right now how to analyze so up to vm the diode will be on the remaining it will be off t by 2 t 0 vm 
minus V out, right? This is the V in. So up to here, the diode is on. So when the diode is on, it will be replaced by a 0.7 voltage drop because I am assuming D is practical, that is constant voltage top model. So it will become like this. So plus minus VC, this is 0.7. What is the maximum? Vm, right? So this is the V out. So V out is simply 0.7 volt. So previously it was 0, now it is 0 0.7. And what is the VC? Minus Vm plus Vc plus 0 0.7 equal to 0. So Vc will be Vm minus 0 0.7, right? So this will be given to the output waveform as a DC value in negative side, right? So when it is uh, off, when the diode is off for a uh, this portion, so this will be plus minus V in. So what is the capacitance voltage? Vc, which is Vm minus 0 0.7, when the diode is off, so we can find the output waveform minus V in plus Vm minus 0 0.7 plus V out equal to 0. So what is V out? V in minus Vm plus 0 0.7. Now we can draw the output waveform. Right. That is something like this. This is V in. V out. So up to here, the diode is on. So diode D is on. When D is on means it will be 0 0.7 volt. When it is off, then it slowly decreasing. So when V in is equal to 0, so this will be minus Vm plus 0 0.7. By see here, when V in is equal to 0, minus Vm plus 0 0.7. Similarly, the maximum will get as how much minus 2 vm plus 0.7 so this is the waveform we will get and so on right so this is the difference between the ideal and practical so only the 0 0.7 differences will be there and the waveform will be looking like almost similar from ideal and practical so this is how to analyze the negative clampers which is unbiased so we did not apply any biasing voltage right next we will analyze this circuit so next we have to analyze the this circuit next we have to analyze this circuit so for this input signals and we have to draw the output waveform so very simple so once you understand that concept we can draw easily the output waveform so if it is a square waveform that is minus 10 to 10 there is a peak to peak is 20 volt and a maximum peak is 10 minimum peak is minus 10 volt right now very simple for this one what you can ex expect for a positive half cycle the diode d is on when it is on so when vn is positive when it is diode d is on so the capacitor will charge through this path and what is the maximum value 10 volt so in this case V out will be simply 0. So when V in is negative, right? So to draw the output waveform, I can simply take it as V in. And the capacitor stores how much? See, minus 10 plus Vc is equal to 0. So Vc will be simply 10 volt. So this is a 10 volt. And the diode D is off. So this is the V out. Now, what is V out? Minus V in plus 10 plus V out is equal to 0. So what is V out? Minus 10 plus V out. Now we can simply draw the output waveform. So 0 initially then it will be increased to minus 10. See when V is equal to 0 minus 10. See when V is equal to minus 10 so it will be minus 20 volts. So this is the minus 10 volts. Now tell me what is the peak to peak here? 20 volt. So peak to peak will never change only the DC value will be added to the output waveform. So next then after this the diode still will be off. So whatever we give the input that will be added to this DC value which is stored in the capacitor. So that will be given the output.
that is very simple for the sinusoidal signal how to analyze right so when vn is positive that is up to plus 6 volt so up to this point the circuit will be like this plus minus vc the diode is on plus minus 6 i i need to apply so when so whenever the capacitor sees the path so it will charge it to this voltage so vc will be simply again 6 volt now from this from here to here or after that point the diode will be off so plus minus v in this is 6 volt and the diode d is off so we have to find the output voltage so minus v in plus 6 plus v out is equal to 0 so what is v out minus 6 plus v in. so to draw the output waveform we cannot draw directly as we have drawn from the for the square waveform this is the v in 6 minus 6 so up to here 0 because the diode is ideal then after that we have to draw the output waveform so this will be minus 6 volt next v in is equal to 6 0 v in is equal to um, 4 volts minus 6 plus 4 minus 2 so when v in is equal to 0 it will be minus 6 so it will be reached to minus 6 and so on maximum minus 12 volts so what is the peak to peak 12 volts so input peak to peak is also 12 volts right again it will uh, when it is 0 it will come back to minus 6 when it is 6 it should be 0 again and so on right so this is the negative clamping right now see here so this plus 6 will be clamped to 0 volt right now if the diode is practical that is and you use this constant voltage drop model how to draw the output waveform so there is a slight change see so there is see here so when the diode is on it will be replaced by a 0.7 voltage drop so that means v out will be 0.7 so it will be shifted by a 0.7 volt that's it that is the only difference so maximum it will be reached to minus 20 plus 0.7 that means minus 19.3 so here minus 10 plus 0.7 so the dc level will be minus 9.3 volts so that is the only difference for practical case right similarly for here also so this will be 0.7 so dc value will be minus 6 plus 0.7 so minus 5.3 minus 12 plus 0.3 so this will be minus 11.3 volts so that is the only difference we will get right so here what i will get 0.7 and so on right so this is the output waveform for practical diode right now here you may get one doubt when i told what are the components we will use in the clamping circuit? I told you we will use a resistor, capacitor and a diode. But I did not use resistor. So what is the impact of that resistor? See when I use, when I see this circuit, this is the capacitor and this is the input signal and this is the diode. Now I am finding the V out but where we will apply this output voltage? So this output voltage should be used somewhere for some purpose right so if i consider that circuit as a some load to this circuit so that will be simply replaced by a, a resistor r because i am giving a signal to some other circuit so for that circuit will be load for this circuit right so load means always it will take some energy or whatever so that's why we will consider as a some load so that load will be replaced by simply r so i can find the v out somewhere here right so parallelly all voltages will be same now is there any effect of res this resistance on the operation of this clamper so there will be some effect so when vn is positive the diode is on so when it is on so maximum i am applying as vm the capacitor is will be charged 
this is vc when it is on short circuit and this is the resistor r so whenever it is a short circuit the total current will be flowing through this short circuit path or we can say simply this is zero resistance zero resistance parallel with resistance will get as simply short circuit so so whenever it is short circuit this v out will be simply zero and uh, the vc will be as vm only so for positive half cycle there will not be any effect of this resistance r so when vn is negative that is for this cycle minus vm the diode d is off so this is minus plus vm and this is the plus minus vm the diode d is off and this is the resistance r now is there any effect of this resistance see the moment the capacitor sees the path see there is a closed path the capacitor try to discharge from vm see this is minus vm so the current will be something like this the current will be flowing like this the opposite direction as the forward bias right so the capacitor try to discharge now we know what is the time constant rc right if this time constant is very large right the capacitor will not discharge that is compared to the input signal so this is the input waveform this is 0 t by 2 this is t this is the vm this is minus vm so for positive half cycle no problem for negative half cycle the capacitor try to discharge but so what is the time period here so only t by 2 if this tau suppose very much greater than this t by 2 the capacitor will not discharge it will be retain that vm right then we can apply the kvl to find the v out see here if i apply like this minus v out minus vm minus vm is equal to zero so what is v out 2 vm so it is not a 2 vm it is minus 2 vm see minus v out is going that side so minus vm minus vm minus 2 vm so v out is equal to minus 2 vm so we'll get the same output waveform as we got for the the previous cases without uh, load resistance r so 0 minus 2 vm and so on right so what is the capacitance voltage my vm in the negative side so this is the output waveform even though when we place resistance r but we have to remember condition is the time constant should be very large compared to the half of the input time period similarly for sinusoidal signal also so this is about the negative clamper which is unbiased. In the next lecture we will see biased negative clamper.